back on our program. I am Audrey Mack with GoTel Ministries and um, we are here together. We started a series on uh, faith and I like to call it Victorious Faith because God has not called us to live under the weather or under the circumstances. God has called us to be overcomer. Uh, God has called us to live over and, and uh, the enemy and everything that he will try to do. Jesus said in this life, you will have tribulation, but it's not the end of the line. He said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And if he has overcome the world, that means that you and I, by faith, and that's why we need faith, we can also, and we should, overcome the world. And that's when God our Father is being glorified. It's not through the sickness, it's not through the tragedy, it's not through all of that that God is glorified, but it's through us getting a hold of faith of the Word of God and just coming against what the enemy does and overcoming it and showing that God heals, God delivers, God wants to do good because he's a good, good father. I love that song key that sings, God is a good, good father. That's who he is. Yes, he is good. Even his name, God, means good. And so in order to be able to live that victorious life, we need to walk by faith. So I want to encourage you and invite you to watch and rewatch the episodes, the preceding uh, episodes, if you have not seen it already, because today I'm gonna go, you know, I don't wanna keep covering what I did before, but I wanna move forward, if that's okay, amen. We saw in the preceding episode that uh, faith is like a spiritual muscle, you know, just like you have a bodybuilder, in order to have strong muscles, he'll spend time at the gym, you know, exercising his muscles, putting pressure against his muscles, putting them to work. And it's in the process of doing that, that his muscles are getting stronger and stronger. And he can lift up, you know, progressively, you know, 50 pounds, 100 pounds, 150 pounds. And, you know, this, you know, and they try to push. Did you notice they have records, you know, world record. They're trying to push to see how much, how much they can lift, you know, how far they can go. Well, you know, in faith, we should do the same. I'm going to preach to myself that we don't want to live in a comfort zone. And if you've seen my website, there is a little saying that says faith starts where your comfort zone ends. You know, when we choose to step out of the comfort zone, that's when our faith starts working. And so we've got to put our faith to work. Jesus said, if you have a servant in the field, you don't tell it to sit down and do nothing. You put him to work. And so your faith will increase or your faith will become stronger when we start putting our faith to work because it's like a muscle. And you remember, I said that because you have faith, you have to continually exercise your faith because it has the danger to regress. If you don't go forward, you'll always go back. You know, there is no neutral ground in the body of Christ and in the kingdom of God. If you don't go forward, you'll go back. And so your faith is the same. You've got to keep believing God. You know, like I said, every need, every challenge, you know, even teach, I'm going to add a little parent, teach your kids. Your kids, they want a new Nintendo or Xbox or they want a new bike or they want to do this. Tell them to believe God for it. Start pushing them or encouraging them to exercise their faith so that they don't just always go on your, on your coattail. They have to learn young to exercise their faith. Amen. We all need to do that. And so um, I talked about how we all have the same faith, the same quality of faith. We have to put it to work. And because if we don't, our faith will produce nothing. That's why James says in James chapter 2, and in verse uh, 20, uh, it says, faith without work or without exercising will be dead or powerless, power of fruitless. It will not produce anything. And I like what it also said in verse 22, that it's by works or by exercise that faith is made perfect or that faith is matured or that faith becomes strong. You see, it's by putting it to work that your faith will become strong. So now, you know, how do you exercise your faith? 
I like what Jesus did. He taught his disciple. He used a, an illustration. He did a word picture. You know, they were in the field. And all of a sudden, Jesus got hungry. And um, he saw a fig tree from afar. He came close to want to pick up figs. Because apparently, if you had leaves on the tree, they were supposed to be figs. Well, he got close. There were, tree, there were leaves, but no fruit. So the Bible says in Mark 11, uh, verse 20, that Jesus spoke to the tree and he cursed it. And it said that the tree, 24 hours later, was totally dead. The leaves were dead. The branches were dead. It dried from the roots. But next day when they walked by, Peter saw it and said, Wow, look at that. The tree that you cursed yesterday is today dead. And in my own word, how did you do that, Jesus? Teach us to do the same thing. I can hear Peter, you know, ask Jesus. And Jesus started to teach them. And he says, whoever, like right there at the beginning, first word, it shows us that everybody can qualify to walk in that type of faith, that faith that can speak to a tree and, you know, and kill it from the root. Or like Jesus said, speak to the mountain and command it to, re to be removed. Jesus says right here that whoever, means that we all can have the same faith. We can all walk in that mustard seed of faith. He says, whoever speaks to the mountain and command it to be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that what he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. And then he says, and when you stand praying, you must believe that you receive it and you shall have it. And you say, okay, well, what, what is Jesus teaching here? Jesus was teaching them how to have a strong faith, how to exercise the measure of faith. They all had faith, but how to exercise that measure of faith to make it into a mustard type seed faith, a strong faith, a faith that can speak to... Them. And so he taught them how to exercise it. Your number one way you can exercise your faith is by exercising authority. That's what Jesus said. He said, guys, if you want to have that faith, the faith of God or the faith in God, you must speak to the mountain. You know, most people, you know what they do? They'll speak to God about the mountain. But that's not what Jesus told us to do. He said, if you want to exercise your faith and have strong faith, put pressure on your faith, don't ask God to do something. You do it. What do you mean, Audrey? You speak to the mountain. You speak. That is exercising authority. The number one way you exercise faith is by exercising the authority that Jesus gave you. And you might think it is strange, but you and I are imitators of God. You and I have to learn to do what Jesus did. And you know what Jesus did? He had spoken to a tree. You might think it's strange because, you know, for so long the church has been taught and begging God and asking God to heal, asking God to remove the problem, asking God to deal with the problem, asking God to do this or to do that. But, you know... We don't really do have a lot of faith. Jesus says, if you want to exercise your faith, if you want to have the same kind of faith that I demonstrated, if you want to have that same mustard seed type of faith, you're going to have to learn to speak to the problem. Not to God about the problem. You speak. You. I'm looking at you right here. Behind the camera and behind the computer and behind the TV. You must learn to speak to the problem. Exercise your authority. You know, Jesus said, you speak to the mountain and you command it to be removed. And the mountain, you know that it's the problem. It can be your cancer. It can be your financial crisis. It can be a bad relationship. It can be X amount of things. You know, whatever it is, you are called to speak to it. That's what Jesus did. I mean, not only did he speak to a tree, but you remember when Peter, mother-in-law, was sick in bed, you know, the Bible tells us that in Luke 4, 39, the Peter mother-in-law was laying down. She had a high fever. You know what Jesus did? The Bible said that he rebuked the fever. What did he do? How did he do it? He spoke to the fever. 
He didn't speak to the father, said, hey, father, would you please heal this little lady? Father, would you please rebuke and take the fever out? He didn't do that. He rebuked the fever. In another word, he said, fever, I command you to go and leave this body. You don't have a right. Go, leave this body. Pain, go. That's what he did. And another time when they are in the middle of a storm, I mean, and Jesus is kind of sleeping. They're taking a nap. And the, the, the Peter, I mean, John, Andrew, they were all fishermen, but yet they panicked because apparently it must have been a pretty bad situation. And they went to Jesus and kind of woke him up and said, don't you care that we perish? Do something, help, you know. And what did Jesus do? He didn't go and say, hey, Father, would you please calm the storm? You're the creator, Father. No, Jesus was, is the creator also. He was there when he created the world. And you know what Jesus did? He spoke to the storm. He just said, peace be still. Waves stop. Wind cease. He spoke to things that we're like, Audrey, are you telling me that we can speak to the weather? We can speak to inanimate object? We can speak to our body? Yes, that's exactly what Jesus is telling us to do. You know, if you have a sickness in your body, you speak to your body. If you have pain in your knee, you say, no, sickness, you go, live. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Go from this body. Knees, I command you to be healed. Fever, I command you to go. You, Jesus said, resist, or excuse me, James said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. James didn't say, oh, you talk to the father and ask, ask him to resist for you. No, he told us to speak to the mountain. He told us to resist and to speak to things. Whether, you know, I, it's been, I've, I've done that before. You know, I'm in Florida and we've got hurricanes, we've got storms, we've got tornadoes, we've got, you know, uh, life-threatening, you know, element. But you know what I do when that's the case? I go outside and I speak to the wind, I speak to the water, I speak to the weather. I said, tornado, you're not going to go through this property. No wind, I command you. Water, you're not going to go high. And I speak to the element and then I go home. And you know, not long ago, this is what I did. We had a hurricane. It was one of the biggest, strongest hurricane uh, we've ever had here. And that's what I did. I went inside, exercised authority, and then I went home. And when in the midst, at the worst of the hurricane, when the wind were at the strongest, when the trees were bending down, when the water was rising, you know what I did? I went, I said, I've spoken to them. I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to freak out. I'm not going to yield to fear. I just, I prayed. I exercised my authority, you know, and by faith, I just went to my living room and I took a nap. I stayed in the peace of God because I knew that I exercised authority by faith. And I was not moved by what I saw and what I heard and what I felt. You see, I was exercising my faith. And so that's what we've got to do. We've got to speak to the problem. Don't talk to God about the problem. You talk to the problem about God. You tell your problem, you know what? And I, you know what I've also done? I've spoken to my bill for, to my bills. I had bills on the table with no money. I spoke to them. I said, bills, I command you to be paid. Money, I command you to come to me in Jesus' name. And within the end of the day, I had enough money, and that was a miracle, enough money to pay all my bills, to put food in my fridge, and to give an offering. Because I wasn't going to eat all my seeds and all my, my harvest. Amen. You see... That's what we have to do. We've got to speak to things. We exercise authority, but we also, you know, authority can be exercised, not just with commands, you know, but by words we speak. You see, you remember when the centurion came to Jesus and he, he said, Master, you know, my servant, and apparently that man was a good man, was a centurion and was a good man. He had given money to build a synagogue which, by the way, is the only synagogue still standing in Israel. That's interesting, isn't it? And so that man had a good reputation. He did good. He had faith. And so he, he sent people towards Jesus to meet Jesus and said, my servant is sick. Could you please heal him? And so Jesus goes the direction, goes to the man's home. And as he gets ready to get the, the centurion walks out of the house and meets Jesus. And I, he probably knelt before him to worship him and said, Master, I'm not even worthy that you just stepped into my house. 
only speak the word. Only speak the word and my servant will be well. And Jesus said, wow, I've never seen such great faith or strong faith in all of Israel. You want to have strong faith? Start decreeing and declaring things. It's not just about the command, but it's about declaring things, you know. Jesus, you know what he did? He said, you can depart, your servant is healed. He didn't command, he didn't even speak to the, to the servant, he didn't even speak, he just declared healing over the body of that man. He said, your servant is well. He spoke a word. And so, by what we say, you know the Bible says life and death are in the power of a tongue. By what we say, we release, we exercise authority. Uh, you know, number one, Jesus has given us all authority. He said in Matthew 16, verse 19, he said, you know, uh, uh, I give you the keys of the kingdom. And keys is to unlock and lock. Keys is when you have the key of the house, I mean, you have the authority over the house. You know, I have keys. I get in my house, but nobody else. You know what I mean? It gives you a key. It's a, it's a sign of authority to open and to lock. And so Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom, of the ruler, uh, of the authority. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I like that verse in the complete Jewish Bible. It says, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you permit here on earth will have to be permitted in heaven or in the spirit realm. Whatever you forbid here on earth will have to be forbidden in the spirit realm. So you see, by the words you speak, you can allow or forbid. You can resist or allow. And so by the word we speak, we can exercise authority, which by turn we exercise our faith because authority has to be exercised by faith. You know how I, I understood that and how I learned that, you know, through my 30 years of ministry, through trial and error, you know, and things you learn, a lot of things along the way. And I remember I was a young missionary in India and I was doing a crusade and there were, I think, 50 or 60,000 people there, but they brought a woman to me who was demon possessed. And that woman had worshiped the gods of the snakes. In India, they have millions of gods and they worship, you know, the rats, the sun, the, the snakes, everything under the sun, they worship it. And they, right there she had worshiped the snake. And you become like what you worship. And her body was twirling, her head was spinning, her tongue was coming out of her mouth. And there was a hiss hissing coming out of her throat. And so they brought her to me and they said, you know, she had been prayed for again and again, you know, but that woman is bound. Could you, you know, pray for her? And so I'm young, but I know I have authority. So I go and I speak to her and I say, in Jesus' name, I command you demon. You see, I spoke to the, the demon. I didn't ask God to, to, to get the demon out. I spoke to the demon. And I said, demon, in Jesus' name, I command you I command you to get out of her. And I waited and I looked. And what was, the, what was happening? Nothing. It got worse. I mean, she got, you know, twirl even more. Her Things got worse and worse. So what did I do? I prayed again. And I said, in Jesus' name, I command you, come out of her. And I waited. And what happened? Nothing. It got even worse. And though I got frustrated. I mean, my voice got louder and louder. My, you know... My arms starting to, you know, my, my expression got more and more frustrated to the point where, you know, I was like, and that went on for 10 to 15 minutes, uh, probably. And until I heard the still small voice of the Holy Spirit in me, and he said, how long are you going to cast the devil out of that woman? It surprised me. I mean, I'm having a conversation with the Holy Spirit, and I say, well, when I see her healed, a free when I see her free. And then the Holy Ghost says, you are walking by sight and not by faith. You remember what I taught? That faith is believing something you cannot see or feel. And he said, you are walking by sight and not by faith. And then he said, don't you know that one word in my name is enough? 
in the name of Jesus, that demon has to go. Right there, I understood that when you exercise authority, you have to exercise authority by faith. That means that you know that you know that when you speak to the mountain, speak to the body, speak to the demon, speak to the element, when you speak to the mountain, you know that you have authority and you know it's got to obey, and you refuse to be moved by what you see or don't see. And so right there I understood. Well, long story short, I finally, I said, okay, I understand. I spoke one more time to that demon. I said, now you understand I'm in business, so I'm going to commend you one. And my voice was very low. You know, I didn't scream. I didn't holler. My voice was just, but it had an authority that wasn't there before because I knew I'm going to tell you one more time, and this is it. you got to go. And I did that, and you know, I went and prayed. There were like a bunch of people waiting for prayer. I went and prayed for everybody, but you know, the whole time I'm praying for the other people. Everything in me is wanting to peek to see what's happening to that lady. But God says, don't yield, don't walk into sight. The moment you go back into what you can see and feel, the devil will overcome you. He said, you've got to exercise authority by faith. It means be convinced, be persuaded that my name is enough, even if you don't see or feel anything. And so I did that. But you know, the next day I was on the stage, that woman was totally free. I learned a valuable lesson that we exercise faith when we exercise authority by commanding and also by speaking like Jesus did. We speak. You know, today, when you know, that's what the Bible said, let the weak say, I'm strong. When you said, I am strong, I am healed, or I'm, gonna, I'm blessed, I'm going to prosper, I'm going to have the best job in the city. I'm, when you declare things, you know what? You are exercising faith, and you are standing by your word. That's why it's so important for you and I to be people of our word, people of integrity. We've got to learn to believe in our words, so when we speak, we believe what we say and the devil believes what we say. And the spirit realm believe what we say because our words has integrity. And so we, we exercise our faith when we exercise authority by speaking to the problem, by decreeing, declaring. You know, that's what Romans 4, 7, 19 said that God is a God who brings life, the dead to life. And call, listen, Call things that I not, and I will add, not visible, as if it was. That means that when you speak, you, you, you might see your bill fold, you know, with no money in it. And you say, I believe I'm blessed. The word of God says I'm blessed. So bill fold, you filled, you're blessed. You might see your bank account in the red. And you might say, you know, bank account, you are blessed. I'm the blessings of God. I've, I've got the blessing of Abraham upon me. You know, I'm redeemed from the curse. So bank account, you are blessed. You know, you can feel your body aching and you resisted it and you spoke to it and you say, no sickness, pain, go, get out of this body. But then the pain tries to come back and you declare, uh -uh, I'm healed. I received my healing, I'm healed. You are declaring, you are declaring by faith and you standing by your word, you are exercising your faith. And you know, when you keep like that, your faith gets stronger. And you know, I'm gonna add another little thing to exercising authority. You know, like I was saying earlier, being in joy and peace is one of the greater form of authority. You know, when the devil tries to get you to enter into fear, when the devil is trying to get you into panic and to reacting in fear and reacting in spiritual warfare, da, 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 you know, you know, I, I remember I was sitting in my office behind my desk and I heard the Holy Ghost tell me the dog that barks the loudest is the dog that is the most afraid. And you know, it's same with us. Sometimes I see Christian that try to exercise authority, but they are in a reactive panic mode. And yes, they scream and they exercise, they bind and loose, but it's not born out of peace and out of knowledge of your authority. It's really reactive. It's like it's a, it's a fear motivated 
spiritual warfare and you'll never be successful there is no faith in that but when the devil presses you tries to get you to get into fear into reaction into panic you stay in worshiping god in peace and joy and you start laughing god you are exercising authority you are exercising faith in the midst of the the, the problem when you start lifting hands putting your eyes on Jesus and singing to him and worshiping him, you are exercising authority. Do you know that's what Paul did? And he, he did it not because he was trying to get out of the jail. In, in Acts 16, he, was, he had done the will of God. He had preached the gospel and now he is with chains on his feet and in, his, in the stock in the deepest part of the prison and in, it is in the pit. And you know what him and Silas, what they did? They started to sing, pray and sing worship to God. And it's not, it was not in a panic mode, in a trying to get out of the prison. God, if we pray, if we worship, you're going to open the jail. No, it was just because they said, you know, we're not going to be, we were doing the will of God. So we're not going to get into fear. We're not going to get into panic. We're just going to worship God. What else can we do? We are, we're not going anywhere. We might as well worship God. And as they worship God, you know what? There was great authority there. That, that was the greatest demonstration of faith is they chose to worship God in the middle of the darkest place. And as they did that, authority was, was exercised. The chains broke. The doors opened. There was an earthquake Everything just, you know, everybody's chains were loose, but they didn't go. They stayed there because, oh, and, and even the jailer got saved and his whole family. You see, that was great authority. So I want to encourage you, you know, to exercise your faith. The first thing you can do, speak to the mountain. You can stay in the peace of God, worship God, stay in the joy and the peace of God, and then decree and declare. You'll exercise your faith, and as you exercise your faith, your faith will get stronger and stronger and stronger, and don't, you know, and keep on doing it. Keep, stay in the peace, stay in the joy. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's peace, joy, and, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Stay in the spirit of God. Start worshiping God. Stay in the peace, stay in the jo joy, stay in the worship. Amen. And then worship God. And then you'll be in that place, in that atmosphere of peace. Your eyes unto God. And then you speak to the mountain. Then you, pe you speak to the to the problem, then you just, you're going to see that your faith will work and your faith will become strong like a mustard seed. Amen. I hope this is helping you. We're going to go a little further tomorrow to see another way how to exercise our faith. So come back tomorrow. But in the meantime, please visit our website at www.gotelministry.org org and subscribe to our newsletter. You'll receive testimonies of what God has done. You'll receive our itinerary. You'll receive great messages. And um, you'll be up to date to what we are up to, where we are and what God is doing through this ministry. And if you can, just give us an offering. Send us an offering. It will help us to continue those programs and, and to bring the gospel all over the world to those who don't have access to it. So God bless you and see you tomorrow. Thank you.